Welcome back to the garage. In this video, we're going to be doing a quick overview of the new motorcycle I bought. Now, I kind of did a preview of this bike in the previous video, and I thought it is such a special bike. It really deserves its own video, just kind of doing an overview of it, because it's, it's just a fascinating machine. So this is a 2006 Suzuki GSXR. 1000 and on paper it might not seem that impressive i mean it's a gsxr 1000 it's a leader bike yes it's fast but this one specifically is really really unique just because of the amount of high-end upgrade parts that have been thrown at it but before we get into that just a brief overview of why the gsxr 1000 specifically the 2005 and 2006 models also known as the k5 or k6 is a, an important model in Suzuki's lineup and even in sport bike history. It's because back in the late 90s into the early 2000s, even into the late 2000s, sport bike development was incredibly fast paced. Every two years, every manufacturer was coming out with a completely new designed, completely uprated uh, sport bike. That includes 600cc and 1000cc bikes. And Suzuki really was leading the charge with these updates. And when the 2005 GSX-R1000 came along, it was just a continued improvement over Suzuki's 1000cc bikes. And the 2005 was just lighter, more agile, and the engine was an absolute peach with tons of mid-range grunt and top-end performance. Um, at the rear wheel, you're looking at 150, 155 horsepower. So it really was a very sprightly machine. It was fitted with dual stage fuel injectors. It was the first year to offer a factory slipper clutch. It had a gear position indicator. It had great suspension, great brakes. And every magazine shootout of the time just praised this bike over all the other manufacturers. It was just a perfectly balanced superbike. And in fact, when BMW was going to develop the first generation of the S1000RR, it was the K5, K6 that they used as the benchmark to design the frame and the engine, just because it was, Suzuki got it so right. In fact, Suzuki's kind of been chasing that ever since. They just really haven't hit the nail on the head like they did back in 2005 and 2006. If I were to make a prediction as far as collectability goes, this bike is going to be just as collectible, if not more so, than the CBR900RR, which really set the production leader size-ish bikes on its head. Uh, and now everyone wants a CBR900RR just because it was kind of that first real production grade, lightweight, high horsepower kind of machine. So this was kind of like that next evolution and still is seen as a benchmark today as far as like a completely balanced machine that has the right amount of power with the right amount of weight and the right chassis geometry and all that. Now I've been in the hunt for one of these K5 or K6 GSXR 1000s. Really been looking for the K6 just because I like the graphics a little bit more but I've been searching for one for quite some time and they're getting incredibly hard to find not just somewhat trashed or you know just some goofy modifications going on with them or just wrecked and poorly rebuilt it's getting hard to find ones in good shape with original bodywork it's getting really hard to find ones completely all stock um, so yeah I've been looking around for one the values have steadily been going up or at least holding steady I had one of these back in 2010 it was the blue and white 2006 and I I don't know why I sold it other than I was just bored and I want to try something else. Uh, I didn't have the space to keep multiple bikes or the funds to keep multiple bikes. So I sold it on. And they weren't like super collectible at that time, but now they are. So I was lucky enough to find this bike on Facebook Marketplace. It's about an hour and a half away. And preferably I'd still want the blue and white, but the red and black is actually quite striking and it is a 2006 only color. They didn't have a similar color in 2005. Another upside to this particular bike is its lower mileage. It's got like 6,000 miles showing on the dash. 
which is pretty good mileage for a 17 year old bike it's, it's crazy to say that this bike is 17 years old it certainly doesn't look 17 years old but uh yeah it's getting harder to find stuff like this now i knew this was a bike i had to buy when i saw in the pictures the glimpse of those olin forks and those brembo brakes those are not just run-of-the-mill taking off a different production bike type suspension or brakes those are racing parts a very expensive to buy if you have to go out and buy them they're the suspension isn't even available anymore you couldn't even go out and buy those if you wanted to unless you found them used somewhere and then as i started looking at the pictures more and more i'm like holy cow forks you got the brembo calipers you've got brake tech racing rotors you've got marcasini wheels front and rear like what like someone must have just dumped their bank account into this bike at one point and I, I certainly could never bring myself to do that sort of thing, but I will certainly take advantage of someone else who's done that and get a bike that's just put together and has everything I'd always dreamed of putting on a bike. Like, I've, I've never even considered spending $5,000 on a set of wheels or something for a bike. It just seems insane to me, but I'll certainly buy a bike that someone has already spent that kind of money on. You've got the attack racing triples upper and lower got an Olin's steering damper which is in a different location than that would have been stock stock they're on the lower triple but here this mounts to the top nut and to the gas tank bolts so unfortunately you do have to remove this assembly to even get the gas tank up but not a huge deal um, it's got a full Yoshimura exhaust system the stainless exhaust system with a carbon can has a good sound to it it's got the Gilles tooling uh, axle adjusters and superbike stand spool mounts I did buy those just because I was I didn't want to run the regular spools that mount to the swing arm because it's really easy to crack these tabs on the swing arm so I just didn't want to deal with that. Went to this new style, which meant I had to buy this Woodcraft stand, which is really sweet, but um, yeah. So I did a couple of little things to this bike. When I bought it, it didn't have the original rear fender. Most people would never even want to put that back on there, but that is just the way I do things. I love having it look stock. And then as you start to look more and more at it, it's like, whoa, this thing is nowhere near stock. It's got the carbon rear hugger carbon chain guard and I pulled a practical enthusiast thing and put the original uh, tire pressure decal on the carbon fiber chain guard so it looks like OEM plus ish it's got a Gilles tooling titanium axle nut and axle adjusters of course Marcasini wheel in the back it's got a 520 chain conversion which is a narrower gauge chain with aluminum rear sprocket it's I think down a tooth in the front and in the rear. So you have quicker acceleration and a lighter rotating mass. Olin's rear shock with remote preload adjuster. Sato machined aluminum rear sets that are riding on full ball bearings, adjustable. And you can see it's got a quick shifter set up here. It's got Woodcraft engine cases and it has a CRG aluminum clutch lever mount and lever which is pretty nifty bit of kit right there brimbo master cylinder radial master cylinder it's got an aim mxl dash which says hello peter when you turn it on you have to hook up a, a computer and there's a special software that allows you to configure all of this you can set up all your warning lights and set up thresholds for water temperature and all of that so you can see it's got nearly 6,200 miles. So pretty nifty stuff for the mid 2000s right there. Of course, dashes, aftermarket dashes have definitely marched onwards since that was made. They're all color now, but still pretty cool. Now, when I got this, the wiring for this dash was an absolute rat's nest. And it took me forever to figure out the proper way to route it so it didn't look nasty and gross. So I've wrapped it in nice Tessa tape and of 
tucked it all back in there so it looks somewhat factory. It also has like a GPS module rigged up to this because this is actually a, a data logger as well as a dash. And it's got this GPS unit, or it's got this, it's actually a gyro unit. And then it's got a lap timer right here. I doubt I'll ever use any of these th things, but they were just kind of like hang dangling around in here. I made a special bracket so that they're tucked nicely and snugly up beneath that bezel right there. So yeah, pretty decked out bike. I put these carbon fiber frame protectors on there just to prevent, you know, scratching and nicking the painted frame. It's incredibly easy to do on these GSXRs. The the finish on parts isn't the greatest, so if you can take an opportunity to protect it, you should do it. So there you go. Pretty nice looking bike. There's only a few more things you, I could even think to upgrade. Strangely enough, it doesn't have a braided rear brake line, so I could do that <laughs> if I wanted to. I could get matching rear Brembo brake caliper, but that would require changing out the brake caliper mounting bracket for a custom size one, so <laughs> maybe if I get ambitious later on, I might do that just to kind of complete the package. So this bike has been fitted with a Bazaz traction control and fuel mapping system. You can switch the fuel mapping on the fly. There's two maps with this toggle switch. And then you can adjust the traction control level with this knob right there, which is pretty, pretty cool. This is like a thousand dollar upgrade uh, in the mid 2000s. This is before bikes came from the factory with traction control. So this was kind of your only option. It reads, I think, engine speed and uh, ground speed or something, and it compares those, and it says it basically looks for spikes in RPM, and if it sees one, it cuts fuel. So it's a very primitive traction control system, but it works. It doesn't have a yaw control system or anything like that. It's just only looking at engine and speed metrics. But as part of the fuel mapping system, it does have an O2 sensor that's been welded into the uh, exhaust here. So it has a feedback loop, so it is constantly adjusting the fuel trim based on actual environment that it's running in, which is pretty cool. So yeah, a very sweet 2006 GSX-R1000. I've always dreamed of having a bike that's basically fully kitted out, but I never thought I'd actually have one because I, I could never bring myself to spend the kind of money that someone did at one point on this bike. I added it up. I mean, there's about $16,000 in just parts on this. It's just wild. I certainly didn't pay anywhere near that for the bike itself with all the parts on it, but I certainly paid more than a completely stock one. I was kind of on the fence when I was going to buy this. I'm like, it's more than I would, it's a, it was like a few grand more than just buying a stock one. But I was like, put the wheels and the suspension and like, it's like, I can justify it. I can justify it and I think it's worthwhile. So I just bit the bullet and did it. Of course, when you buy something, they're never quite as nice as you want them to be. So there was a lot of things I had to go through and, and kind of replace and refresh, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't too crazy. Obviously all the fluids need changed, needed new tires. I needed a couple new parts here and there. Uh, obviously new fender. Uh, the dash needed to completely set up, so I had to learn the ins and outs of how to configure the dash and how to redo some wiring, but we got there in the end. Now, I will say, after riding it around, the suspension isn't very well set up for me, and that's to say that the springs are, it's way undersprung, and I'm not very heavy. I think with all my gear on, I might be like 170 pounds. Um, with my race suit on, I might be closer to like 175, 180. Uh, I simply can't set the sag on this to the proper amount. It just has too much sag. Even with the preload adjusters all the way cranked in on the forks and the shock, like I, I can't get it to, to have the right amount of sag. It's just too soft. So that'll be something I'll have to deal with eventually, get some different springs fitted up, but that's relatively inexpensive as far as improvements go. But I will be taking this bike to a track day tomorrow, along with the Ducati. I'm gonna try and rig them both up in a trailer 
and get them to the track day. Now they are calling for rain, so fingers crossed that that forecast doesn't hold, or at least doesn't rain out the entire event. So that's just a quick overview of the new Suzuki GSX-R 1000. Just wanted to show it off a bit. I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. It is a cool bike. Get some riding video in, hopefully with the track day that's tomorrow, because um, I know you guys want to see it and hear it go, as do I. So we'll get it out there, and it should be an exciting time. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all again next time.